Welcome to Pretty Lies and Alibis, a podcast dedicated to the Lori Vallow and Chad Daybell case. Join us as we seek the truth and travel the long road to justice. Hi, everybody. I'm Gigi. And I'm Fruit Loop. And welcome to another episode of Pretty Lies and Alibis. So tomorrow... Lori will be in court or probably on Zoom for her pre-trial conference. That's July 17th, 1230 Eastern Time. And we will be live tweeting that um, on our Twitter, which is Pretty Lies Alibi. Um, I don't think it'll be a very long hearing. This is kind of just a housekeeping thing, I believe. Because these are misdemeanors, I don't think she's entitled to a preliminary hearing. So they do this where they just make sure both sides are ready if there's a plea deal or anything like that offered, which I doubt there will be. Um, And then they agree on a a date for the trial. So are you excited about seeing Lori? I don't know if excited is the word, but are you ready to see Lori tomorrow? Yeah, it'll be interesting to read her body language. We know she'll probably have a mask on. So I just find it not It's weird that Chad doesn't wear one, but she does. So... Yeah, it's a little I don't weird, know. But. Yeah, I'm not sure why. Yeah. Um, so these are for the misdemeanor charges. These are not the uh, felony conspiracy to commit destruction, alteration, or concealment of evidence. There's She has two counts of those, but those are in Fremont County. This is Madison County where the welfare check was performed, and these charges still stem from that. Now, we know they've dropped the two felony desertion charges, they're not needed because, unfortunately, the kids are deceased. So we'll see what happens tomorrow. Um, Mark Means is saying that he also wants a bond reduction because since the felonies were dismissed with her being charged with these misdemeanors, the bond doesn't really correlate with the charges. Do okay, you- it's <laughs> it's crazy. Like, she has the other char- other charges in the other county. Which she can't pay. I mean, she yeah. she, she has... So I was a little confused about how much bond she actually has, but I think we figured her total bond right now is two million. Yeah, and that's one million in Madison and one million in Fremont. Yeah. So even if he lowers the bond, I mean, they don't have a million dollars to get her out. Yeah, it's I don't understand it. Yeah, but she's pled not guilty. By the way, that came out yesterday. Um, so a few of the things that, uh, I was watching a criminal defense attorney on YouTube. His name escapes me, but he was talking about the defenses that Mark, the affirmative defenses that Mark means put out the first three, the court lacks jurisdiction on, it says personal jurisdiction. Number two, the court lacks jurisdiction regarding the subject matter jurisdiction and improper service of process. That's number three. And this criminal defense attorney said this is maybe where we start to see Mark Means doesn't know what he's doing. Yeah, it makes no sense. These are more pertinent to civil charges than criminal. So his opinion was we're already sort of seeing where Mark means maybe don't know what he's doing. Oh man. Yeah. And we had a question about that on, uh, I don't know if it's Facebook or Twitter or where, uh, where we had made a statement. We didn't think that he was capable of representing her. And we listed, uh, the capable, like what, what his website list that he does. And it's, there's nothing criminal listed there. Right. It's family court. And we, like we said before, for the desertion, that works. Yeah. Okay, she's deserted children, or we know she didn't desert them. But at the time, he would be an attorney you would hire for that charge. But now that we have felony charges, which, you know, to destroy or alter or conceal evidence, it's kind of like out of his, you know, range of specialties. Yeah. And the other thing that he asked for, he wanted to reserve the right to ask for a change of venue in Madison. And I get. Yeah. So in the end, he can ask for like a change of venue? Well, yeah, he reserved the right to do that. So I don't, I mean, I don't know. It's misdemeanor charges. These are the least of her worries, honestly. I mean, murder charges are coming down the pipes. Yeah. It's, it's just, they're not in a rush. I've, every day I see so many people say, where are the murder charges? But 
they can't make bail. We talked about on a previous podcast, as soon as they charge them, they have a right to a speedy trial, which means that within a month, they would have to try this case in its entirety before a jury. So I don't think they're in a hurry, but we were watching court TV and one of the legal analysts said she thought they could drop by when? Next week before July 22nd. Yeah, so we're close to that too. I hope you guys are getting ready for uh, the end of times. We'll see. Six days, less than a week. Yeah. Make sure you got all the stuff you need for the apocalypse stocked up. Yeah, and I, I still <laughs> would love to be a fly on the wall. Oh, yeah. And I, I think... You know, my opinion is is always going to be, at least for right now, nobody's turning on anybody. But on the 23rd, they're not together. They can't discuss the world didn't end. Well, they maybe can, and we'll get to that in a minute. But I wonder if a different reality sets in for both of them on the 23rd. I, honestly, I don't think it will. It'll it'll end up, he'll, he'll say he had a new revelation or, right, yeah. you know, God's given us more time or. Yeah. Um, or I got my numbers mixed up. Yeah. <laughs> um, but we were talking about our, we thought they were not able to talk in jail, but we found out they actually can. Yeah. If, if I think the judge and the court has to sign off on it. Yeah. And we still don't know because there was some. Uh, stipulations uh, that he that the judge made about contact with people in the case or something. But I think that was a condition of bail. It may be. Yeah. It so, may be. So. Uh, but we were watching on court TV on the same little uh, piece they did. Ashley Banfield said they can talk in jail. She's just not sure if they have. I haven't seen anything listed on the Idaho Judicial Cases of Interest website where anything was filed for that. I don't know if that's something that actually has to be filed on that, you know, like for the case, but we haven't heard anything. Yeah. And we discussed if they're co-conspirators, can that happen? So we don't know if they're listed as that. So I don't know. Right. But Ashley did say last night, what she learned was that they were able to talk in jail. It's a little different than when she was out, but I guess if you're doing like a facility to to facility, you mean when he was out or yeah, when he was out. Yeah. Sorry. (laughs) Um, so this, yeah, we're not going to see any evidence tomorrow. This is not a preliminary hearing. Um, we are definitely eager to watch the preliminary hearings that are coming up, which for Lori is on August the 10th through the 11th. The 11th was put on the docket if it were to go over, and that's for the felony conspiracy. And that's where I think we're going to start to see a little bit of her defense. Yeah, and that's going to be interesting to see where Means goes with this. Yeah, I'm very curious because we were talking earlier, and I think the only option that Mark Means has is mental health, some sort of a break or brainwashing, Stockholm Syndrome, something to that effect. I don't see any other way they could defend what's happened. Yeah, and on the flip side of that, I don't see... I honestly don't see either one of them turning on each other. Uh, and I just think her her statement of, I want to be called Miss Daybell, was, mm-hmm. it was a huge statement that I'm standing with him. It, yeah, definitely, uh, for sure. But I think at the end of the day, Mark Means um, was hired by her to defend her. And at some point, he's going to have to have that conversation where, okay, we have to have an alibi, a defense. Why didn't you report your kids missing from November until February when you were arrested? Yeah. I just think I wouldn't be surprised if they try to pin everything on Alex, but she kind of blew all of her defenses with the way she acted for months. Yeah. Being in Hawaii, these wedding pictures, you know, carrying their little tote down to the beach. Yeah, having Tylee's card in her bag right because we just found out that the there is a a video I think it was when Nate Eaton uh confronted them in Hawaii and you see Lori has like a gallon zip bag that's full of money and we just learned that Tylee's bank card was in that bag yeah and and I mean I just don't see how she could say 
well, Chad or Alex told me the kids were fine, and so I just went and got married. And, you know, why did you run the night that the welfare check happened? I just don't see where she has much of a defense of trying to play stupid. No, and I don't see her going against Chad. No, I, I think at the end of the day, she's she's just screwed. I mean, I, th- I think I don't see any way, but if I'm Mark Means, I'm going the route of, some kind of mental defense. I'm, I'm going to say she's mentally ill. She was brainwashed or something to that effect because I don't see any other justifiable reason. Yeah. And I don't see him convincing her either. Like, right. She's, she's leading that camp there. Yeah. I guess we'll just see what happens. The longer they're apart, um, it's going to be a little while before we get to trial for the kids' deaths. I mean, they haven't even been charged yet. So she's going to have a lot of time to think. I think the only way that, that, that she could be convinced is if Mark Means were to maybe say, look, if we can get sympathy from an emotional or mental standpoint, maybe you won't die. Maybe you will have the chance to get out at some point. But otherwise, I mean, what are they going to do? What's their defense going to be? Yeah. And I, after sources have said, you know, that, if she admits to all that, she admits to everything that she did was wrong. Yeah, I'm not surprised that she pled not guilty. I mean, yeah. that's what you have. If you plead guilty, to, I, mean, I mean, these are the misdemeanors. I mean, look, she she did ask Melanie Gibb to lie. She did try to throw the cops off when they when they approached her, and she didn't show up to court, which are the contempt charges. But it's all kind of woven in together. So I wasn't surprised that she she pled not guilty yesterday. You, you kind of have to. Yeah, me either. This is just um, these are these charges are so minor to what's coming, and and we're only talking about the kids. We still have Tammy Daybell's autopsy. We still have Charles Vallow's murder, and potentially Joe Ryan. So at the end of the day, you could be looking at five separate murder charges for her. Yeah, that's serial killer. Oh yeah, I think it's after three they consider you a serial killer. Yeah, Chad and- too. And, you know, then we also have, I can't wait to see the cell phone pings on both of them. Oh, my goodness. Yeah. Because what I was thinking is this. When they got the prob- probable cause for Chad's arrest, of course, we saw Alex's pings. We still don't know, was Chad ever over at Lori's on the nights both the kids were last seen and the nights we think they were killed? Yep. There's so much that I can't wait to, to find out. Unfortunately, um, it might be a little while. I mean, I think we'll learn some stuff at the preliminary hearings. They have to put forth a defense. And and or I don't know if they have to put – do they – I don't know. I have to look. I mean, they may, but – I mean, I know the prosecution has to, has to show what they have. Yeah. So my brain is not functioning right now. It's the simplest question, but – I'm well, go- I think they're going to try to prove that the prosecution's wrong, so... Maybe. I don't they've know. They've got to fight a little bit, I would think. I'm so blank right now. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. So that was kind of all about Lori and Chad. Um, Chad uh, Daybell, his hearing is actually um, before Lori's um, preliminary hearing. His is going to be August the 3rd through the 4th, and we'll be live tweeting that all day. So if you can't watch, you're at work or you're in a doctor's office, you can't have the TV going... If you follow our Twitter pa- Twitter page, I will be doing probably every 30-second updates and try to get most of the important stuff put out there. It's uh, It helps people that can't watch for various reasons. Yep. So we're going to do that. Now, we had done some more research about some other people. Yeah, so we had some requests, and we asked you guys what type things or you want answered or looked into. So we dove in a little bit with Jason Mao and Zulema. Mm-hmm. Um. And there's not a ton of information, uh, and we're going to continue to dig. But some things we did kind of find out about Jason Mao, um, he was in the military. He was in, it was in the Army, U.S. Army. Um, he was a police officer in Phoenix and Chandler. Uh, he was uh, a contractor with the U.S. State Department. And that's not unusual coming out of the military. A lot of those uh, military guys do that. Uh, He teaches at uh, the LDS High School Seminary Online. He coaches wrestling. Uh, There's a possibility he was stationed in Hawaii when he was coming out of the military, and that was in the 90s. Um, He's married. 
he's he has spoken at preparing a people events and we know that we've seen documentation on that mm-hmm. um and he speaks at like youth conferences in BYU Idaho um so there's really right now there's no evidence connecting him to anything and we all know we've heard you know he's a police officer uh and i think one of the uh sources said he was on the side of the road when they were going to the police department when Lori took Charles's truck and all that stuff. So we know those things, but we don't know if we don't have any evidence he played a role in anything. And there's just not a whole lot of reliable evidence about him out there. I mean, it, regarding the role. I mean, we've read stuff, but for me, I, I would rather have something more official before we put it out there. Yeah. Because I don't you know, I don't really want to, like, contribute to rumor or speculation. I think he's definitely involved on a deep level. Yeah, with the preparing of people and, and all that stuff. It'll, yeah. it'll come out in the wash. I mean, if he's involved, we'll hear from it yeah. by law enforcement. Yeah. And so, um, so I dove into Zulema a little bit, which is Alex Cox's that was his wife before he died. They were married 13 days before he died, and he was hubby number six. That's a lot of hubbies. And I found it funny because when I was looking her up, one of the things that, that, that was said on a website about her is she's a relationship coach, and Alex was her sixth husband. <laughs> I, I just was like... That is pretty comical. Oh, wow. It's, yeah. Uh, go figure. Yeah. So we think that that Chad, uh, or I'm sorry, that Zulema met Lori around 2018, and that was through Chad Daybell. Yeah. And some of the earlier stuff, back in 1996, 1998, she was arrested twice for dangerous drug possession, which we later learned was meth. And then in 96, with the 96 arrest, she received five years of probation, from what I can tell. And then in 98, she received three years of probation. In 2015, both of those charges were set aside. And so it's not like the record is expunged. It, it's, it means it doesn't clear or hide your conviction. It shows publicly that you've completed all of the penalties associated with your crime. So those are over. They're in the 90s. I mean, I didn't see anything else. Um, no, I didn't either. Regarding an arrest, I mean, we only looked in, I believe, Maricopa County for that, which is Phoenix. Phoenix area, which I think that includes Gilbert and all that. Yeah. But, yeah, so she's an emotion coach practitioner, a cuddle expert. That's one I can't figure out. I, okay. So, apparently, people will hire cuddle experts to come to their house and cuddle them. Uh-uh. It seems creepy. Yeah. Um, I mean, so, like, when you're cuddling somebody, do you say, well, what do you like to do for fun? Where do you live? It's strangers cuddling. Yeah, it's just very odd. Yeah, to say the least. And it's, we haven't we haven't seen anything from her. Nothing. Um, there's a gentleman who goes on YouTube and goes around to these places, and we've seen him go to the daybells and all, and he does that. And I think he, you know, touched base at her home, and her daughter wasn't too happy about it. I so think they called the cops or something, but yeah. he knew one of the cops, or, and, but yeah. he didn't get far with that. Yeah. And I, you know, I can't figure out, is Zulema sort of the secret weapon for law enforcement, or is she just scared and hiding? I don't know. Yeah, I don't know. I wish they would say she's cooperating with police. It would be nice, but, yeah. I, you know, she hasn't done any interviews. She's the only one out of their inner circle that has not done any interviews, so I almost think maybe she's working with, with law enforcement. It's a possibility. In a big way, but on the same token... Um, I know Alex's autopsy said natural. The investigation is still open. So I don't know if just maybe that is keeping her quiet. I'm curious to see how she comes into the picture once these hearings and preliminaries start. Yeah, it'll it'll be interesting to, to see what role she played, if she did. And if she didn't and there's no evidence. Yeah. Yeah, there's... Maybe she's just going to distance herself. I mean, yeah. it's pretty obvious that, that the marriage with Alex was kind of, you know, following the same path as Melanie Pulowski and, and Ian. And uh, at they, you know, right after the uh, the welfare check, Chad and Lori go to Hawaii, get married. 
Ian, Melanie, Alex, and Zulema all end up in Vegas. Yep. So it seems to me like she's just part of this inner circle, probably like an arranged marriage is, is kind of how I see it. Yeah. And um, she also is an energy healer, and she works to release trapped emotions in people. Hmm. Yeah. She going to release some trapped emotions if she tries to cuddle me. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Um, so I was reading up a little bit, too, about the Church of the Firstborn, which is, I think, the church that they say they're affiliated with. And there are different sects. Sex, that, that Sect. Sounds, secta. Yeah. My that's brain is, is just not in the right place. Um, each one has a goal. And from what I've read from different people that were part of these different groups at one time, um, they, I guess they kind of assumed that Chad's little group, their goal was to control the elements. I do remember hearing that. Yeah, because if you remember, Zulema and Alex stayed behind in Vegas to conjure earthquakes. Yes. Yeah. So, and also, she seems to be close to Melanie Pulaski because she came to her one of her custody hearings. Yeah, she was. They did show her on. She was on camera walking in with her. Yeah. And uh, speaking of Melanie Pulaski, one little thing I saw that was actually kind of funny is um, on one of the interviews, Melanie said that it was Alex that was in the storage unit with uh, Lori. And he said, her lawyer says, oh, she's known him for 30 years. You would think she knows what he looks like. And then they come out and say, that's Chad Daybell. Oh, yeah. <laughs> I thought yeah. that was, yeah. I, I know my uncle. I've known him for 30 years. Oh, yeah, that's not him. Um, the one thing I did find is Zulema is still active on leaving Google business reviews. She left a review for a barber, thanking them for staying up and late for her. So it just goes along with her in hiding. I guess it could be. Yeah. But that's kind of all I found on Zulema so far. Um, she did have a Pinterest page that I thought was interesting, by the way. Uh, it had some religious quotes, LDS quotes. But there was a shower, a baby shower board. Now, I'm not starting rumors about anybody being... It could have been for Melanie. I don't know. But she did have a, a baby shower idea board where she was pinning things for uh, a baby shower. But other than that, she's, she's not really... She doesn't have a, a large online presence. I haven't found social media sites. I've gone to the Wayback Machine. And she just largely seems offline. Yeah. Other than some, we did find some podcasts. We haven't listened to them, but um, I've heard people say they're a little hard to listen to. Yeah, I think so. Yeah. So I'm going to punt over to you. I, I, let me just say, Fruit Loop and I have been best friends for almost 30 years. I've known her since middle school. I don't think I have seen her sit as much as she has the last two days over here at my house researching this body cam footage from when Charles Vallow was shot. Yeah, I've I've been focused. You have been more than focused. There were yeah. times I would say something to you and you totally ignored me. Yeah. You were all I've up had in my there. headphones on, focused. I know my kids yeah. have been running around, jumping on furniture, and, and yeah. she just doesn't take her eyes off the screen. So we're gonna get into that right now. What if what are some of the things that you found on this video? Okay, so we all know we feel, you know, that there was some mishaps with police and stuff like that. And we've already talked about it. I mean, that's just, I mean, it, it's, it's, I'm, it's sad it happened, but you know, it happened. And so in looking at this footage, it, it's just crazy. These statements that Lori made and Alex made and um, Tylee made, there's just holes all in them. Um, and we, originally there was one of Lori out where the officer asked her, were you here when the shooting happened? And Alex had said, no, she wasn't. And she answered yes. So we know from sources that she was called back because obviously she left the scene. Uh, she drove Charles's rental car. Um, and so she was called back, but before she got back, the officer is talking to Alex. And his statement is, you know, amongst him wiping the back of his head. There's just so many holes in, you know, what he said happened. And 
Um, so we know Lori stated that in Lori's statement, she says she got Alex to come over because she thought that Charles was going to cause trouble with her. But then when Alex is the, he asked the officer, ask him why he's there. And he's like, Oh, I just came to spend the night at my sister's, you know, hang out. <laughs> But he never once said, I came over because she was, you know, afraid that, that Charles was going to cause trouble. And if you remember, Summer had said on the interview with her mom that she had sent Alex over because she was worried about what Charles may do to Lori. Yes. So yes. just pick pick a person, any person. I mean, yeah, that's your biggest red flag right there. You it, got three people saying, oh, I, I came over because or I sent him. Yeah, it, th- that right there. Yeah, it's like, what? <laughs> yeah. Um, her statement, probably the first page and a paragraph onto the next page, is basically filler. It's talking about things that happened in the past. Uh, it's not like what happened that day. Huh. And it, it's not, okay, this is what happened. He came over this morning, you know, all that stuff. It's stuff that when he made a move to Houston and just all this stuff that she's telling. Um, and it's the, I mean, the first whole pair, like the first whole page is just, you know, stories. Um, and, and if you think about it, I mean, in a normal world with normal people, if your brother just shot your husband, um, number one, I think most people would be reasonably upset. Yes. Just distraught. This is not good. Even if he, which we don't think he was, even if he were going at Alex, it would still be a bad thing to have to shoot and kill him. Yes. And why would you talk about all this past stuff that kind of makes him look bad when he's dead? Yeah. Why and would you not talk about what happened that day? Yeah. And when the officer finally goes over to talk to her, that's when she makes the comment, and she's kind of standing there, like, nonchalantly, like, why are you making me stand here in this heat, and you're inconveniencing me? That's how I read it, with body language, and she's just, huh, yeah, hi, neighbor, you know, laughing. Oh, yeah, and that, that, I cringe when she says that. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, uh. so she just, she's just come up on the scene where her husband was shot and killed by her brother, and... There's no emotion. It's like ice in the veins. Yeah, she's probably getting her playlist ready for her pool party Yeah, in her mind. So one thing that I caught on her statement, she says, um, Lori said her husband has been saying all these texts, so she's talking about Charles, like you're going down and such, and that he is blaming her for their marriage breakup and other marriages around them, calling her a destroyer, a destroyer of families Mm. so i kind of thought i mean that kind of sounds like he may have talked to tammy oh possibly i hope so i hope they had that conversation yeah i mean that when i read it that's the first thing i thought yeah and it kind of fits too you know if if he died in july so we assume he got in in touch with her at some point before july i guess it's uh, i'm not sure when julie Rowe wanted to stop by I don't know that date on that. But if you think about it, a woman's not going to be okay with her husband cheating in a month (laughs) after she finds out. So it's pretty reasonable that whenever Charles did, if he did actually get a hold of her, at that point, things changed big time for Tammy. Yeah. And she probably didn't want anybody associated with this group at her house or a woman for that matter. Yeah. You find out your husband's cheating with one woman. I mean, she's probably sitting here thinking, well, how many of these business trips were actually just hookups. I mean, just thinking about it from a woman's perspective, I do hope that call was made or they reached out in some way and got a hold of each other. Yeah, I hope so. I hope so too. But that's a good catch. I would, I mean, I wouldn't have grabbed that reading that. And when you told me earlier, I thought, wow, that is maybe the first bit of proof that that he did get a hold of her because we never heard anything and we still haven't about any kind of an, an affair other than Chad. Yeah. So I think maybe... Maybe he did. Yeah. Um, The other things that stand out that it just doesn't make any sense. So Charles goes out, puts JJ in the car, comes back in because he left his phone. She says his phone was on the counter. And 
then Lori had his phone. Um, I, from the get go, have said it was nothing about a phone. No. Um, so if you look in that house, it's kind of like when you first walked in, there was like a little step down and then there's this big open area. And then to the right is the kitchen. So you have to walk a little ways and then the kitchen's there. Um, I don't know. I just don't, I don't think so, but that's, that's my opinion. Um, and I mean, we're entitled to throw our opinions. Everybody else does. So, (laughs) um, but it just, it doesn't flow. Uh, and I don't think Alex says that they left. So, so Lori, JJ and Tylee get in the car and leave. And Charles stays there with him. Yeah. I don't think that, I I don't see that. Yeah, that makes no sense because with the email to Adam Cox where he talks about, I think they're up to something. Yeah. He had told his lawyer, if I die, it's Lori and Alex. Yeah, you're yes. right. That makes absolutely it, no sense. It makes no sense for him to stay there. And if Charles was supposed to take JJ to school, why didn't Charles just leave and take JJ to school? Like what? Doesn't make sense for Lori. Okay, then I'm gonna go take him to school. While you stay here with Alex, yeah, I'm gonna go take JJ to school. Yeah. It makes no sense. It doesn't. And and I don't I don't know Charles, but it doesn't seem like he would go there on his way to take JJ to school and cause a shouting drama match. No. From everything we've learned about his love for JJ and on the body cam footage where he's reaching out to cops to help her, he seems very reasonable and calm. And I'm sure he, in the back of his mind, he knew he was overpowered with them two there anyway. Yeah. Now, what I'm curious to find out is how far away they think the gunshots were. Yeah, and they can tell that by the way it enters the body. I do know that the gun that Alex had was a forty five, um, and it had the capabilities of having 13 bullets in it and seven shots were fired oh was it seven yeah. i thought it was four well if if what the in the police report there were five remaining bullets in the gun um and there was actually there was, so there was five bullets in the uh clip and then when they pulled the gun to make sure to clear it that there's no bullets in it one came out, so that would be mean that there were seven shots were fired. Um, so I mean that was in the police report. That's how it. That's how it was broke down. Uh, I mean they didn't say seven shots were fired, but it, it had the math. It was like five still in the clip, one discharged out. So yeah. I, I'm pretty good at math sometimes. <laughs> we, um, we were in math class together. Yeah. I beg to differ but we'll save that argument for another day yeah yeah no we're awful at math (laughs) but um i got my calculator out on that so i'm good (laughs) um so there was seven shots fired and i do know if you look at the uh footage there is a police officer like tagging things that are on the ground and there was nothing in that room so i'm assuming that it had to be shell casings or something but you know the cop did make the comment and i won't say the word but he said um he shot the F out of him, or in other words, the cop realized it wasn't just a one-time shot. Yeah. It, it, I don't know how many actually hit Charles. We can't, the autopsy's not available. Yeah. And we don't, I mean, I think the detective said uh, there were two shots to his chest. Uh, oh. And, I mean, that 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 could be right. I don't know, because like you said, we don't have the autopsy, but... Right. Um, I'm just saying, if he sh- if he shot him like four or five times, it's, it's like overkill. Yeah, that's if he that's shot, personal. Yeah, if he shot him seven times with a forty five, yeah, uh, that's that's way way overkill. Yeah, I don't know guns very well, um, but it sounds bad. Yeah, I mean, it only takes one bullet to kill somebody. And the the question, but. and I I don't I don't think Alex's uh, statement is true whatsoever. Uh, I firmly believe it was a setup and Charles was ambushed going in that house. Um, but they ask him, why didn't you, you return, you say he hit you in the head with a bat, which 
I've played sports all my life, softball, and you've played sports all, you know. Yep. So I know what a bat does when it hits you in the head. And there's there's no way that that's what happened. No, and, and we've kind of thought about doing a little video recreation. Um, we may, but they were kind of similar in height. Uh, I think Charles was maybe six foot. Alex was six two. Six one, I think Charles was, and yeah, that's about right. Yeah, I mean, I don't know. It's just that the angle at which the wound was. I mean, it. Why? Would, I don't know. It just it doesn't add up. No, no, it, it it doesn't. And when you look at where Charles' body was, you look at the placement of the bat. Like it doesn't line up. No, not at um, all. Where the bat's laying, like the handle is away from him. Mm. like up, you know, near the entryway Good uh, catch. laying uh, and it's pointed away. So if he was holding that bat, it, the handle should be pointed towards him, not away from him. Oh, that's a really good point. Um, you And there wasn't enough room for it to roll around or whatever. Right. Uh, and his head was at the, the, the. He's close to the wall. Right. But on top of that, you know, he's near where you hit the ball with the bat. Yeah. So. If how he's laying and where the bat is placed, it would have meant that Charles had his hands on the barrel of the bat, and when he was shot, he fell, and that's that's how it landed. And it would have been he had his arm extended over his head where that bat was laying. So uh-huh. I, I just don't I don't buy it. No, and that makes sense. Um, we did a little research trying to find out if Charles was right handed or left handed because we know he played sports uh, because where Alex was hit. It just it doesn't add up. Um, no, I I didn't think so either. And to me, it, you know, the argument and Kay said it in an interview. His sister, which is he played college ball. He was a pitcher. Yeah. Um, if he had to hit Alex with the bat, Alex probably wouldn't have gotten up. No. Charles was a very fit man. He was very muscular. He was tall, in better shape than Alex. I might add. Yeah. So none of it makes sense. So. Just where he was hit in the back of the head, it makes it, it doesn't look like a bat wound me. No, I've had worse. No, when I flung the bat and it come back down and hit me in the head. Yeah, it, it doesn't. And I, I'd be curious to see because the one thing that sticks out to me is I'm trying to find a good picture, um, and you have to grab it from video of that wound. But to me, it looked like the swelling was it was almost like a half moon. Yeah, and. It almost looks like somebody would have to, to hit from up, like maybe Lori, yeah. who's a lot shorter. she was 5'6". Right, she's a lot shorter, so she's yeah. going to have to aim that bat up, and that's kind of how the wound, if I could imagine whacking somebody in the head, and then yeah. how would it swell? It just seems like it would come from, number one, a shorter person, and like we said, if it's Charles, it would have been lights out for good probably. Yeah, and the other thing that sticks out to me is when he, he shoots Charles – and Charles is laying there, he goes and doctors his head before he dials 911. Yeah. I've been in situations where you have to dial 911, and you're not going to go doctor your own self right. before you call 911. No, it's it, it all stinks to high heaven. Yeah. Um, so um, Charles comes, supposedly, Charles comes at him with a bat, and... Alex flees and gets his gun, and he comes back at him. So the police ask, why didn't you stay in the room? Right. Why didn't you lock yourself in the room and call 911? Because it wasn't self-defense, but yeah. keep going. <laughs> yeah. I mean, Alex has, he's got a weapon. Right. Um, and it's it's just all just so crazy. And I think, what in the world? Like, I don't know. Well, the thing that surprises me is... I don't think Alex's uh, criminal record in Texas, or no, it was Arizona where he tased Joe Ryan. Is no, that, it was Texas. Was it Texas? Okay. Yeah, you were right. Um, but those, don't, it was a felony, so it shouldn't go away. So I'm just curious, did they not even like put this dude in like a national database search? I, I, yeah. Because him, and the question was asked, why, why did he have a weapon? Because he states on the video, I have a concealed weapon permit. Why did he have it if he was convicted of a felony? Yeah. Um, and we researched that a little bit. And uh, you have to reapply so many years. I think it was like two. 
And if they signed off on it, you were allowed to get your concealed weapons permit. Yeah, and it varies from state to state, but everything I looked up, it just wasn't clear. Yeah. There are a lot of stipulations there, so I don't know which ones Alex, you know, was good to go. Were there things in his way? Regardless, we know criminals don't need to go through the proper channels to get weapons, but that was a good question that you brought up the other day because you said if he's a felon, I'm not sure he should have had a gun. Yeah, because he was convicted of aggravated assault. So it goes back to, did the cops even pull his record to see? And then they would have seen that he tased her previous husband. Yeah, exactly. And spent 90 days in jail and was on probation for it. Yeah. Hmm. So, um, I mean, basically, that's all I have on um, on that. Yeah. Uh, it's just all contradicting each other. But it's interesting to pick it apart like you have where I think you probably watched that maybe four or five times at least in its entirety. Ten or twelve. Okay. So, yeah, it was a lot. Like, I don't think we said five words in the last two days that you were over here because you were just, you know, very dedicated to, to, to finding this information. And I I learned a couple of things from, from what you found. Yeah. And we want to we wanna speak truth. We don't want to theorize and, and all this stuff. And we did a little bit with our opinion on, on what happened, but well, that's, I mean, um, I think in these cases, sometimes you have to theorize because until we learn facts, it's just sort of fun, not fun. It's not a party, but it's, it's kind of what trial watchers do. Yeah. And every group you go in, whether it be web sleuths or some Facebook group, everybody's theorizing what we don't want to do. And we say this, every podcast is put, you know, something that we don't know that's, that's accusing in nature. Yep. Um, just because it's at the end of the day, these are real families dealing with this. These are real people that are dealing with the loss of JJ and Tylee on a very personal level. And we just never want to add to their grief or be a source of, of any discomfort. No. Uh, but at the same time, when, when it's warranted, we'll speak what's not pleasant too. Yeah. It's just, so tomorrow, don't forget 1230 Eastern. She will be in court for that pretrial conference. Uh, we usually watch it on East Idaho News. Uh, it'll be streaming all over. I think some of the Facebook groups are going to have watch parties and that sort of thing. I'll be live tweeting on the Twitter. And then we, depending on what happens, we may do another podcast in the next day or two. I, I just don't think there's going to be enough from that hearing for us to go forward with, yep. with a podcast tomorrow. I mean, we may be surprised. Yeah. And if you have more questions that you want us to research and uh, figure out, um, just shoot us a message and, uh, we can uh, work on it and bring you some information on what we find. Yeah. And, and we're going to pick back up on those custody papers, but like we had talked before that they, they're sort of repetitive at this point, we have found a few little details here and there, but I think we'll finish that up maybe with one to two more episodes of this, but we just wanted to come in with something other than the custody papers and uh, talk about some things that are more relevant to where we are now. Uh, we're still waiting on all these charges. We'll see. I, you know, I, I think they'll come out of the blue and surprise us one day that we wait, 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 and then all of a sudden we've got charges. So I'm just really anxious to see this move forward in that manner. Yep, me too. Uh, all right, guys. Well, if anything happens, we'll bring it to you. But in the meantime, you guys be good. Good night. Good night.